Google just announced a ton of new unreleased products as well as new features and capabilities for existing products that hint at where Google and the Pixel product roadmaps are going. As someone who spends a lot of time reviewing Google products over the long term, I wanted to give you my perspective and insights on what Google announced at I.O. 2022 and what you can expect for Google hardware this year. First, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. We got our first look at what these new phones will look like with an arguably more polarizing external back design than last year's phones. They'll use the next generation of Google's Tensor chip and house new cameras, and a refined exterior design using polished aluminum which looks really nice. And Actually, the more interesting Pixel that Google talked about at I.O., in my opinion, is actually the Pixel 6a, which gets you everything you get in the Pixel 6, including the top-of-the-line Tensor chip, minus the top-of-the-line camera hardware, all for $449 US dollars. What's really interesting about Google's strategy here is they're giving you a top-of-the-line processor at a really great price. And this has been Apple's strategy for years now with their phones like the iPhone SE. And by putting the latest chips in them, you get some really cool software features like Magic Eraser, Live Translate, plus some of the best chip performance you'll get in a smartphone at this price. The Pixel 6a comes out this summer here in the US and we'll of course be doing a long-term review on the 6a as well as the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, so make sure you subscribe to the channel in order to see those videos, and let us know down in the comments what you're excited about with these new Pixels. Now, Google didn't just stop with phones for their Pixel announcements at I.O. They also unveiled the new Pixel Buds Pro, which feature active noise cancellation, a custom-designed Google chip and audio processor, and they have transparency mode as well as spatial audio with supported devices, which begs the question, did Apple not trademark any of their feature names? The Pixel Buds Pro come in at 199 US dollars with seven hours of battery life with noise cancellation on, and we'll of course be reviewing them and comparing them to the Google Pixel Buds A series, which we will have a long-term review out on soon, as well as the Sony XM4 earbuds, which are high-end noise canceling earbuds, and those have been my earbuds of choice now for the past few months. Google also made official the Pixel Watch, which will be coming this fall and looks pretty great. It's like Google's designers and product engineers had to ask themselves, what exactly would make us stop wearing an Apple Watch and wear a Pixel Watch? We'll see if Google delivers, but with the Pixel Watch, you now see them starting to build out the broader Pixel and Google hardware ecosystem. Now, the last product that Google teased won't even come out this year, but in 2023, and that's the Pixel Tablet, a next-generation Android tablet that, from the front, looks exactly like a Nest Hub Max, but with slightly slimmer bezels. And while they didn't mention what it was for, the back of the tablet seems to hint that the tablet will have a similar smart connector setup to the iPads, which is used to attach the iPad and connect it to things like the Magic Keyboard. And here's my first prediction of a Google product that was not announced at I.O. I think Google is going to create a smart speaker stand for the Pixel tablet, which will basically turn the Pixel tablet into a larger Nest Hub Max when it's not in use and charging on the stand. And speaking of the Nest Hub Max, Google Google actually announced two new features coming to that product later this year, and the first one is called Look and Talk, which allows you to look directly at the Nest Hub Max and then start asking the Google Assistant for something, all without saying the wake word, which is pretty cool. The second feature coming to the Nest Hub Max is called Quick Phrases, which are phrases that you can set up in the Google Home app, which will allow you to skip the wake word for phrases like set a timer, turn off the lights, or what time is it? So you no longer have to use the Google Assistant wake word for some of your most frequent asks. Now, it's unclear when this feature is rolling out and what devices will support it at the time of this recording, but we can probably assume it'll roll out by the end of 2022. Now, back to my predictions. Now, the second prediction for a product that was not announced at Google I.O. is I think Google is going to update their Google Assistant devices with the Tensor chip built in. 
This will further reduce latency of the response time for the Google Assistant and allow the Google Assistant to do just way more things than it can do today. At an earlier part of the IO keynote, Google talked about making the Google Assistant even more conversational and said, quote, the breakthrough comes by creating more comprehensive neural networks running on the Tensor chip. This is why I think Tensor and other Google custom designed chips for natural language processing are going to be essential to Google Assistant devices going forward and likely why we haven't seen updates to the existing Google Assistant product lineup in some time. Now, the third product prediction I'm making here today is Google is going to make AR glasses because they have to. Now, this may seem obvious to some who watched the entire IO event because of the AR glasses demo Google showed helping people understand each other even when they were talking in different languages. However, there was another part of IO that I actually think is more important to the argument for why Google has to make AR glasses, and that's when the company started talking about multi-search. Multi-search is all about using two different search methods to search for a specific query. So for example, you can use Google Lens to take a photo of a dress and then ask Google for a similar dress in green and it'll show you those results. They also teased in the future that you'll be able to use a scene exploration feature to visually search down an aisle of physical goods and be able to see reviews for each product. Searching this way and identifying objects in the real world as you go about your day, that's one of the cornerstone use cases for AR glasses. Google still makes most of their money from search advertising and services, which is why I don't think they can cede ground to rivals in the visual search space. And that's why I think it's likely Google will end up being a major player in the AR glasses space, competing against Apple and Meta. So those are all of my hardware predictions for hardware that Google didn't announce at IO and a rundown of the announcements that they did make. And we're really starting to see a compelling Google hardware ecosystem come together. This has been one of my main complaints about the Google Pixel phones is that up until this point, they haven't had a compelling hardware ecosystem that could compete with Apple and Samsung. It looks like we're on the cusp of that finally changing. Now, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see long-term reviews of all of the products that were just announced at Google I.O. If you found this video helpful and you liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below and let me know what you thought of what Google announced at I.O. by leaving a comment below. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other Google long-term reviews like our reviews on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, the Nest Hub second generation with sleep tracking, the Nest audio and the nest mini for six months later i'm josh tedder thanks for watching